Um, so let, let's say the patient at this point, maybe he was progressing and was, and was symptomatic at that point, what, uh, which obviously introduces a whole, whole nother layer. Uh, Evan, if the guy, you know, patient receives immunotherapy and then uh, rapidly progresses, now he's symptomatic. Where, uh, tell us a little bit about the thought processes as this guy enters into your practice. Well, if the patient has yet to receive abiraterone, I still see no problems with using abiraterone in this space. I think the nice thing is, is that when you get into this space, you start looking not just at all the primary endpoint or survival or radiographic progression-free survival, as we just talked about, but also some of the secondary endpoints. Abiraterone has pain responses as well, pain palliative benefit as well that's statistically significant. So I don't have a problem with that. Of course, docetaxel, when it got FDA approved, was FDA approved for both an overall survival benefit and a pain palliative benefit. Certainly it's chemotherapy, cytotoxic chemotherapy has more side effects, uh, but I don't necessarily reach straight for it immediately for somebody that's symptomatic. I will usually still try abiraterone first just because of its lower toxicity. Uh, now, have the patients already gone through Cipulis LT and Cytiga and, you know, our potent new hormonal therapies, I would obviously go to cytotoxic chemotherapy next for the, the, the benefits that I just talked about. Mark, what's your been experience? So looking at, looking at the, the dose of Taxel, because obviously for the majority of the urologists in the country, save the select few, you know, cytotoxic chemotherapy has not, you know, generally been uh, you know, within the scope of our practice. So tell us a little bit about sure, dose attack. It's amazing therapy. how it's changed things. Uh, I run a prostate oncology practice and we only treat prostate cancer. And so the usage of chemotherapy in general, since the approval of uh, Zytiga and Extandi has dropped off dramatically. Uh, so, and that's uh, attributable to the effectiveness of these medications to control the disease and postpone the need for chemotherapy. So we are uh, looking at a time period over the last 18 to 24 months where I would say we've given 50% less chemotherapy than we had done historically. Uh, we may be starting to see now some of the people progressing on those other agents and a little bit of an uptick now in the reinitiation of Taxotere and Cabazitaxel in these patients that are progressing after abiraterone and progressing after Extandi. And it's effective in that setting and uh, it's... Uh, Obviously, uh, you know, we're very familiar with that territory, but I agree with Evan that the uh, symptoms are not an argument to forego Zytiga or Extandi. They're very effective medications, and of course, you'll know within 30 to 60 to 90 days if you're controlling symptoms, and if you're not, then the, the next logical step is to go to chemotherapy uh, to control symptoms and to reverse the disease process.